Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, she's in here today. We're gonna have some fun making a bench without a bench from someone who is brand new to woodworking with basic hand tools. So this is going to be a very fun series. Let's dive in. So today we're going to be making a bench. We're going to be getting it from the big box store. I want to make this as a beginner wood, and most people are going to go to the big box store to pick out their lumber. So we have some poplar. Poplar is a good uh, medium wood. It's not incredibly hard, it's not incredibly soft, but it makes a very good first bench. It's a much easier wood to work with, and so that's why we chose this. Also, you can get it at most big box stores, so it makes it a lot easier to source. Um, originally, I wanted to do it out of four quarter lumber, but uh, the four quarter they didn't have enough in stock, so we decided to do it out of three quarter. So that means laminating up a whole bunch of these pieces. And we want to make the bench four foot long for Sarah. So uh, we're going to get these 12 foot pieces cut down into three sections of four foot each. And this takes us then to the first main skill to learn, and that is drawing a line and cutting to it. We're going to be using big box tools here. So this is a, a really you know, cheap handsaw you can get at most any store. It does the work. Does it do it perfectly? No, but it does the work. And uh, we're having a little bit of fun with this. So we're going to use one of them, which is our, our primary board, and use that as our pattern for everything else. Mark all of our lengths off of that, and then use a square to actually draw the line making sure we keep that one uh, board set aside so we have that as our pattern. I'll write a big P on it so it doesn't get mixed up with anything else. And so we tried a bunch of different saws to see if something would work better, we trying the carcass saw, but in the end we just decided that the, uh, the big box store crosscut saw works pretty well. They don't have to be perfect, we're going to be flushing off the ends when we, when we get them all done, so if there's a little bit of issue here and there, oh well. Uh, besides, it's the first bench, there's always going to be mistakes, there's going to be things that are not perfect, but that's part of learning. And it's what makes a, a great first project is if it's not perfect, it's not a problem because it's in your shop. So now we have all the boards cut to length, about four foot-ish, and now we need to glue them up. And this is where the fun starts. So we had the choice of using a PVA glue or using an epoxy. And normally I would go with an epoxy. However, the, because this is a beginner bench, we wanted to go with the PVA. That means you have a time set. And normally I'm gonna say glue this up in two, two halves and then glue them together. But we thought since there's two of us working in the shop, we should be able to get it in time. We were wrong. Very, very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it went pretty well, um, but we ended up with a, a twist in the boards that was uh, a little bit more than I would have liked. Uh, but oh well, you live and learn, and that's part of making your first project. It won't go perfectly, but it will get done. So we've got them all laminated up, all clamped them up. Uh, you want about a clamp every four inches or so to get proper pressure on this. You need a lot of pressure for this lamination. Uh, but uh, yeah, get good clamps. <laughs> so uh, after clamping it up, now we got to go to flattening this. And as you can see, it is a mess. Now the nice thing about a bench is you really only have to flatten the top. I know a lot of people are really picky about it and they want to flatten the top and the bottom, but we're, we're gonna focus on just the top. And at this point, you, you have a bench. You can put it up on saw horses, uh, but we found that was a bit too high for Sarah. So we're putting it down on the, the saw bench. And this could just be a couple chairs or anything like that. Though most people put it on saw horses for their first bench. So we want to come in with a scrub plane or a really thick set plane and traverse the wood going across the grain. And I'll probably do another video here soon about flattening uh, benches. I have an old video on flattening a bench top, uh, but it's a, it's a fun process to go through. Right now we're not caring about it being perfectly flat and perfectly smooth. We'll do that after it's all done. We just want to get it down to a functional surface. And so that means getting rid of all the scrub plane marks. You put pencils on there so you can know where you have been. And this was a, a fun process all around. I would definitely have gone with epoxy had I known how long it was going to take me to flatten that bench. <laughs> <laughs> epoxy just gives you more working time, so it's a little bit easier to, to mess around with. For PVA, you've got to get it set up, and, uh, and it starts to get tacky pretty quickly. So we're going to flush off one end because we want to get a vise on this. I want to get the, the vise on right away because then it is a functional bench. We can make the legs with the, the vise. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. So we're going to cut one end off nice and smooth-ish. Uh, playing that down and then we're going to uh, mount the hardware. We got this vise on Amazon. It's one of the cheaper ones, but it will make a very good vise. I'll leave a link to it down below um, as they are surprisingly good for the price. We want to recess the holder down into it a little bit. Uh, we could put it down in a little deeper, but we just want to make it flush so that the rods run right underneath the bottom of the bench. 
So we're going to chisel in all the way around the perimeter and then come in and remove the waste down to that depth. And so this was a, a fun learning experience for Sarah. Um, should I say more? <laughs> it was definitely a, an experience. No, it was good. Learned lots. Um, James has lots of patience is I think the biggest thing I've learned. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's surprising what happens when you when you have less arm strength than I'm used to, um, especially with a big mallet was causing her uh, wrist problems. So we used the smaller mallet. That just means you move smooth, smaller, slower again. So we put a depth stop mark in there, and we're going to chisel everything down to it. This doesn't have to be perfectly flat and flush. Uh, it just has to average it. So when we put this in, uh, it will sit flat on the bottom, and we can then pound it down into place and put some bolts in to hold it down. Uh, this wasn't a, a perfectly flat bottom, but it was close enough that it works well for this. The, the bolts will do uh, to do well. For the chop, we're going to be using um, a piece of red oak that we also got at the big box store. And so this is an uh, inch and a half by five and a half inches, uh, or what they call a two by six. <laughs> we're going to cut it to slightly longer than the bench is wide. And we're going to make two of these. One of them will be mounted to the bench, and the other one will actually be the chop on the vise. Uh, yes, and this is uh, oak, so it's a little bit more difficult to saw, wasn't it? A little, a <laughs> lot. <laughs> it's one of the reasons we went with poplar. Is when you're beginning, it's it's nice to have a wood that works easily, and poplar is that. Oak is not. Maple is not. So we're going to set the chop on there, and then mark out where all of the rods intersect with the vise. Then we can bring it over and use that as our pattern to cut off the second chop. And this way we have both of them are the same length. Rather than measuring and cutting them, you can use one to, to mark the other. So we're going to drill out the holes for all of the rods and screws to go through the two chops. We have them clamped together so that the, uh, the holes are in the exact same place. Uh, but at this point, I realize, wow, okay, um, we need to get Sarah to the gym. Hey, <laughs> if the bench was maybe my height. No, I, I've decided poplar was a better choice than oak at this step. Now with the, the we had a, a 7 8 auger here that was a, a bit too much for her to move. Um, the smaller ones she can do, but this, the bigger ones require a lot more leverage, and uh, she is, is short on leverage. I'm short on a lot of things. <laughs> so the two outside ones got the 7 8 inch hole, if I remember correctly. And then the middle one we had to drill an inch and an eighth hole, and I didn't have an inch and an eighth auger. Uh, so that meant we had to go with a hole drill, uh, a hole saw. And yes, you can actually use a hole saw in a brace and bit, uh, but again, that was a bit too much for Sarah, so I ended up um, hogging this out. You want to make sure that these holes are exactly where you want, otherwise they tend to bind up. But after we drill it out, we can bring in the hardware and see if it slides in. And it does! Yay! We have our vice hardware now fit with the, uh, the bench. Now we need to mount them together, so we need to pre-drill holes. The, uh, the hardware into the movable chop uh, has three holes. Uh, we ended up having to go get new screws. The, the screws that came with the hardware were for through bolting, and we actually wanted to screw it in. So we pre-drill out the holes, then put a bit into the brace, and drive that in. Gotta love that look. That, uh, that, uh, yeah, that's Volumes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once it's attached to the movable chop, then we can do all of the lag screws down into the base, bolt those down in, and then we need to drill out holes to put the chop onto the uh, onto the, the base itself. We had to do a little bit of chisel work to make sure that the rods would slide in all the way underneath so they didn't hit any of the glue sticking out. Uh, but on the, the, the chop that gets mounted to the vise, we're going to pre-drill down so that the heads can sink in and then come in with a smaller bit that the bits can... Uh-oh. Oh. oh. I thought we took this clip out. D did you well, put it back in, sir? What? I, what's that behind me? Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we should have taken this bit out. Um. No pun intended. <laughs> But if you really want to see the fun of this, go over to the other channel. Uh, we, have a, we have a good bit of fun in the video, as well as we do in the shop. It is nice having Sarah in the shop. So now we can mount it to the, the vise. So we have these pre-drilled in, and then that will allow us to put the lag screws through the chop and then into the main body. You can see how they're recessed in, and that way when you put leather on, the leather will then cover over them. We won't put the leather on until the end when we do all the finishing pieces. 
we can slide it down in, run the screw into the, the vise, and now we have a functioning bench. Uh, from this point on, you can do all of your work on this bench, just set it on top of a pair of saw horses, or in this case, on top of our saw bench, or a couple chairs, or whatever you have lying around, and that's that. A functional bench. Now we need to make legs, but we'll do that next time. Oh, yeah. This was fun, and I liked having Sarah in the shop. Did you have fun? I had fun. So there you have it. A bench top without a bench made by a novice woodworker with basic hand tools. For me, it's been a very interesting thing trying to um, teach and describe someone who's never touched it before. So it's really been helping me with my teaching skills. And have you been learning things? Maybe not the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a lot of fun having her in the shop. And uh, this, is, this is something I think we're going to be doing a lot more of. But well, we're going to be finishing the bench. So uh, next time we're going to be making the legs and doing some of the joinery on that. Um, so there will be probably about two more videos on making this. And we will eventually have plans available for it. Uh, if, they're, if they are available now, you'll find a link down below. Um, but they probably won't be out until the last video so that we can make some tweaks to them as we go. So this has been a lot of fun for me. And uh, I hope it has been for you too. It's been thrilling. <laughs> but we're going to keep doing this and have a, a good bit of time. I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, and ideas down below. Um, tell uh, me what I could do better to, uh, to teach my wife. Uh, 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 or tell my wife what better she can do to teach me. This might be the better answer. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully we're still married at the next video. <laughs> but I think that'll about do it for today. I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. Everyone who is a member on the channel, everyone who's clicked that join button. Thank you. I, I cannot say that enough because you literally are the people who are literally keeping the lights on. And hopefully one of these days it will be here so that Sarah can join us full time. And we can be doing this all the time, being able to put up more content. So thank you to everyone who's been helping out with that. That means more than I can say. So I think that'll about do it for now. And until next time. Have a wonderful day. So after spending all this time in the shop with my wife, making her bench, soon I'm going to be kicked out of the shop and she'll be taking it over. So I better start working on my doghouse. <laughs>